This presentation shows us how to estimate the cash flows with which the NPV as well as the other capital budgeting tools such as IRR, MIRR, PI and the rest of them are calculated. So let's proceed quickly to the mini case that helps us learn how to perform the calculation. So you can read this up on your own and the summary of this is right here. Here's the input data. We're considering the purchase of an equipment with a base price of $80,000. It'll cost $8,000 to modify the machine to suit factory use. And the shipping cost of the machine is $500. Installation cost is $420. So the total of these are part of the um, cost of this equipment right? to purchase and install it for use. With this installation, uh, annual sales is expected to be 450 units. Sales price per unit in the first year would be $135. And so if you multiply these two sales in units by the price per unit, you obtain the first year's sales amount of $60,750. Now operating cost excluding depreciation doesn't quite say it here, but that's what this is in the case it tells you is $60 per unit. And again, if you multiply $60 per unit by the total number of units for the first year, uh, you find the total operating cost of $27,000. Annual inflation rate is 2.5% and so we're going to be growing the sales price per unit and the operating cost per unit at this rate from year to year. The opportunity cost associated with this investment is rental income foregone of 1200 bucks per year. There will be increase in networking capital in the form of raw materials inventory of $4,000. And in subsequent years, um, the buildup of inventories will be equal to 15% of projected sales as we see it right here. Now next up is the projected salvage value of this equipment at the end of three years of use right here. All right, But the projected salvage value which is the same thing as the expected market value at the point when the investment is terminated is $42,000. However this equipment will be depreciated fully over four years so that's going to be a year longer than the time of use. So we're going to use tax rate of 40% and cost of capital of 11% um, in this uh, analysis. So let's begin by first showing the depreciable basis of this equipment. Now note, depreciable basis comprises four items. Price, modification, shipping, and installation. If you have all of those, then add them all up. And in this example, it comes out to be 88920 Next up is the depreciation schedule, which using the straight line method would give you the depreciable basis minus the ending book value. And since we're depreciating it fully, meaning down to zero, then we're going to have to de divide this amount by four years because, again, it is being depreciated over four years. So this is going to be the annual depreciation amount of 22230 so each year, these are going to be the depreciation expenses. Subtracting these from the book balances, we find these amounts here. So that by the end of the third year, this equipment still has a book value of 22230 Now this is relevant in the analysis, since this is the point when the equipment would be um, sold off. Now then, for the initial cash flow, which typically is the first, the initial cash, uh, the cash outflow, we find that it inc it includes all the uh, uh, depreciable basis items in addition, of course, to the initial working capital, the four thousand dollars that we're going to spend building up the uh, uh, raw materials inventory. So, in many cases, some manufacturing machines with higher capacity require that we feed the machine with uh, a larger amount of inventory and uh, 
in keeping with that fact we are projecting to spend additionally four thousand dollars at time zero in prep for the full utilization of this machine so if you add up all of these you find the initial net cash flow to be ninety two thousand nine hundred and twenty dollars so you, you can expect to spend about this amount at time zero to get this process in place now then this is the big deal the annual net cash flows now remember the incremental sales we're projecting here is four hundred fifty dollar uh, four hundred and fifty units per year sales per unit is hundred and thirty five starting out however in subsequent years it is going to grow by the inflation rate of two point five percent so i show you up here the calculation of the next uh, sales price for the second year so it's exactly a hundred and thirty eight point three seven five run it off right here on spreadsheet um, uh, right here in this PowerPoint presentation on spreadsheet though the values are all intact and then you're gonna grow this again by 2.5 percent to get this amount of hundred and forty two dollars per unit in the third and final year so multiplying the number of units of 450 in the first year by the price per unit of hundred and thirty five dollars you find the total incremental sales for this investment in the first year and likewise you find the amounts for the second and the third years respectively now operating costs excluding depreciation again first off the initial operating cost per unit is sixty dollars you're gonna grow this again by the rate of inflation of two point five percent to get the second year figure of about sixty two dollars and the third year figure of about sixty three dollars and then multiplying the cost per unit by the number of units of 450 each year you find the total operating costs for each of the years and that's what you're looking at right here the depreciation expenses depreciation by the way is part of operating costs but for pur uh, for purposes of this analysis to delineate um, its uh, impact we are showing it separately and that's why up here we indicate total operating cost excluding depreciation so for the depreciation expenses we simply go back up here to the depreciation schedule to get these amounts for each of the three years and so if you use it a different depreciation method all that you're gonna have to do is to find the individual annual depreciation expenses based on those different rates for example if you use the uh, modified accelerated cost recovery rates then each year will have a different depreciation rate in which case you're gonna be determining the annual depreciation by multiplying that rate by the depreciable uh, basis which is what you find um, right here so this depreciable basis multiplied by each of the different rates will give you the annual depreciation expenses which you then import into the annual net cash flow calculation right here so in such cases these values may be different from year to year and then finally we have to also include as part of our operating um, expenses the opportunity cost um, which is the rental income that we we're gonna forego if we then use the um, um, the property for this machine so that these are the twelve hundred dollars per year if you add up these amounts which is twenty seven thousand twenty two thousand two thirty and twelve hundred if you add up these three items you're gonna get um, fifty thousand four thirty and do the same for the other years so that the operating income here in the first year ten thousand three hundred and twenty is actually total incremental sales of sixty thousand seven fifty minus total incremental costs of fifty thousand four thirty that'll get you ten thousand three twenty so that's what you do for the rest of the years and then for the tax effects since this is a positive um, amount you're gonna multiply that by forty percent to get these uh, cash out flows representing tax liabilities that will be due and then um, if you net these two amounts you find the net operating income which is shown right here so this being cash flow estimation we're gonna to have to add back depreciation as I note here by adding back depreciation we are showing the correct cash flow figure because remember depreciation is a, a non cash expense these amounts that's non cash expense so we're gonna to have to add them right back 
and that explains why in cash flow estimation we pull depreciation away from the other operating expenses. So by adding depreciation back we get these uh, final operating cash flows that you see right here. Now one more thing remember that at the outset if I go back here we plan to spend four thousand dollars to build up our raw materials inventory in the first year. Now net working capital is typically is the amount by which our current assets exceed current liabilities but keep in mind that this four thousand dollars is incremental in all the words that's the increase in working capital associated with this particular new investment it does not reflect whatever currently exists in the firm so that starting out we're going to spend four thousand dollars to build up our inventory and this will be used in the first year so then in the subsequent years we're going to have to spend additionally ninety three hundred and forty in prep for the second year and so this amount is fifteen percent of year two sales this sixty two thousand two hundred and sixty nine multiply that by fifteen percent as indicated in the in the case and that'll give us this amount that'll have to be spent at the end of year one in prep for um, activities that will take place in the second year. Likewise, this amount here of 9574 represents 15% of 63,825. So obviously, you need to build up your inventory ahead of the activities that will take place in the year to come. And that's why the case indicates that subsequent inventories would be equal to 15% of expected sales. That's what the case is going to tell you. So for that reason, in the third and final year, nothing will be spent over here since um, the uh, activity, this investment will be terminated at the end of year three. So as you can see, if we spent $4,000 at year zero, and 9340 in the um, in the next year the difference is 5340 meaning that this is the incremental the additional investment in working capital that would have to be in place likewise the difference between this 9340 and 9574 the amount being 234 reflects the incremental or the additional working capital that will have to be spent in the year that follows. So at the end of the first year 5340 is the additional investment which is additional cash outflow with respect to inventories and this 234 is the additional cash outflow in uh, the build up of inventories. Therefore this net cash flow that you see here at the very bottom would be equal to the operating cash flow of 28,422. This amount added to 5,340. Likewise, this amount right here of 28,695 is equal to 28,928 plus 234. And of course, this amount is just this guy right here. Summarizing, Again, in the final year, this final amount is brought forward to be adjusted because the final year you plan to sell this machine for 42000 so you're going to have to add this up. But selling it for 42000 means you're going to have to pay tax of 7908 which is shown, the calculation is shown here. It's the market value of 42000 minus the book value at the end of the third period. If I go back, that's it right here. The difference of 19770 you multiply that by your tax rate and that tells you your tax liability. Of course, if your market value is less than this amount, this difference within the parenthesis would be a negative and that negative multiplied by your tax rate, which is referenced as a negative, will give you a positive outcome here representing tax credit and then there would be recovery of investments in working capital so this 9574 is actually equal to I go back here the initial 4000 plus 
the additional 5340 plus the final 234 that will give you the total working capital spending that would have to be would need to be recaptured in the third and final year so this is the convention in cash flow estimation adding up all of these will give you the adjusted cash flow in the third and final year summarizing this again is the initial cash flow which is the money you plan to spend if this machine has to be put in place 92,920 and then these are respectively the annual cash flows again keeping in mind that this 23,082 is this amount right here this 28,695 is this amount right here and this 73,113 is not this amount but instead the adjusted final net cash flow of 73,113. So with these, you use your NPV function on spreadsheets or on your calculator to find that the NPV is positive and that the IRR as well as the MIRR exceed the cost of capital, which in this analysis is 11%. So based on this outcome, we conclude that the project should be accepted. And this concludes this presentation. I am Pat Obi, Professor of Finance, Purdue University, Calumets.